here with Reaction, newly minted Republican nominee for Virginia's 10th congressional district and retired Navy Captain Hung Kao. Captain, good to see you. You know, there are reports that China and Russia launched joint nuclear capable bombers through the Sea of Japan while Biden was in Tokyo. What what message does that send and what should we be doing in terms of response? Sean, thank you so much for having us. Uh, Lindsay, thank you again. Also, it, it just shows the weakness, right? I mean, they're, they're just base, basically testing the water. And when when Joe Biden doesn't respond, then that it gives them the the, uh, the open door to, to do whatever they want, like invade Ukraine or now looking at invading Taiwan. So, Captain, now Biden says that nothing has changed in our policy towards Taiwan, despite his comments. He says we're committed to our policies of strategic ambiguity. After looking at how he handled Ukraine and Afghanistan, are you confident in how he'll defend Taiwan? No, I'm not. I mean, uh, what we're talking about is the Taiwan Resolution Act, which uh, it's really a, a Reagan thing where, you know, peace, truth, strength, where it says that if if uh, in order to ensure peace over there, a peaceful resolution, the Americans will, America will uh, provide weapons, arms, and even up to, to uh, uh, troops in order to defend uh, a peaceful resolution of Taiwan. And uh, I think that's what the president was talking about. But what the White House or whoever is his handler back there is saying is that, oh, no, no, he doesn't mean that. And so, again, it makes us wonder who's in charge uh, of the White House right now. Let me ask you to put your uh, your Navy hat back on for a second. If we had to defend Taiwan, I mean, I, I don't think it's any secret. It would largely have to be a naval operation. Do you think the United States Navy and the military are prepared to defend Taiwan in terms of capability and strength, training, et cetera? So the Navy will, will you know, do its very, very best. But you understand under Obama, they basically destroyed a lot of the Navy or the military itself. We had ships that couldn't get underway, aircrafts that couldn't take off, and submarines that couldn't dive. In fact, when I came to the Pentagon in 2016 to balance the budget, uh, I did wrote the Navy's budget for two years. We, we didn't even have enough munitions, honestly, to attack a, you know, a small little island in the Caribbean if we wanted to. So what President Trump did was he start, started um, building up the, the munition stockpiles, but then we, we couldn't really finish that because uh, his uh, presidency was cut short. Uh, you know. And so you know, that's, that's our, our issue right now is that we have a, a president that's not willing to, to invest in uh, American defense uh, and, and our, to innovate. In fact, right now that uh, the inflation is 8.5%, when we write the Navy's budget, we write for 2% inflation. So that's a 6.5% difference, which equates to about $46 billion. So with $46 billion, we're talking about four aircraft carriers or 36 guided missile destroyers or 335 F-35 joint strike fighters. That's what we're already starting with a deficit when we pass this year's budget. Captain, don't have a lot of time left, but when I think what's happening overseas and our national defense, how important is it to have more veterans in Congress? Only about 30 seconds for you, sir. Ma'am, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, we've, we've seen war and we the le- last thing we want to do is be in war. I mean, I fought in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, I've been in Pakistan. I don't want to see war again. But the only way to, def- you know, to, to prevent war is, is to be stronger, right? I mean, it's either fight, flight, posture or submit. And what Biden's doing right now is submitting. Captain Hung Kao, congratulations on winning the nomination for Virginia's 10th district. Best of luck on the campaign trail. Thank you so much. You bet.